Jordan, did you try that new cereal I bought? No, not yet. Would you like to try some? It's really yummy. Mm, I don't know. I'm kind of picky about cereal. Well, let me open it up and I'll just show you. See, this one is good for you, but it actually also tastes really good too. Okay, I'll try it, but only because you have good taste, Rachel. And I know you've always told me the truth because of your influence. So I'll try it. Get some milk. Oh, here, do you want a blue spoon or a blue spoon? I'll take the blue spoon. Very good. Very good. Oh, I knew you'd like it. And you know what? Influence was a great word for that. Did you know that that is our word from the prayer covenant card today? It means causing a change in behavior or actions, like I caused you to eat the cereal. Today's prayer, if you pull out your prayer covenant card, make me a messenger of your grace, truth, and justice. Jesus wants us to influence others with grace, truth, and justice by delivering God's messages. While well, Quinn finishes her breakfast, let's say the whole prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and making me one of your children. Help me to love and obey you. Help me love others the way you love me. I'm sorry for my sins. Wash me clean. I will praise you with my whole heart. Jesus, I want to follow you as my Lord. Change me any way you want. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to know your plans for me. Make me a messenger of your grace, truth, and justice. You nailed it. Now, let's stand up and worship together.
Hello everybody and welcome to the show you love to love. Who has influence? You know how it works. We present two contestants and you need to choose which one you think has the most influence. Remember, influence means the ability to affect the actions, behavior, and attitudes of others. Let's meet our contestants for today. On the left, I'd like to introduce Princess Elsa former Queen of Arendelle, who can convince anyone, anywhere, anytime, just by freezing the socks off them. Elsa, would you like to say a few words? Hi friends, I'm so glad to be here today. This is why I think I have influence. I was a princess, then I was a queen, and I have super abilities. And isn't my dress super pretty too? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, yes. I do think you have influence, Elsa, don't you? But before you decide, boys and girls, let me introduce you to our second contestant. He's tall, he's strong, and he carries a shield. It's Captain America! It's been said he's influenced an entire nation. Welcome to the show, Cap. Do you have anything to add, I mean besides all the posing? Thank you, thank you. I could do this all day, but I think I have influence because I wear this cool outfit. It attracts attention and because I'm super strong. Stand with me or stand aside. I will be with you to the end of the line. Wow, okay. It's going to be close, folks. Let's check the choose-a-meter. Our choose-a-meter, as you know, is the Bible. Does the Bible say royalty and super freezing ability has influence in God's kingdom? Okay, kind of surprising. Let's check the captain. Does the Bible say strength and a super cool outfit has influence in God's kingdom? I'm getting a message from our switchboard. They say, check the kids on the choose-a-meter. Look at the kids. What do you mean, look at the kids? There are no kids here. Look out there. Out there? Out where? Oh, oh. Oh, you guys. Okay. Let's ask the choose-a-meter. Does the Bible say children have influence in God's kingdom? There you have it. Jesus said, whoever humbles themselves like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. That means you don't have to wait to participate in God's kingdom work. And that, my friends, is fantastic. Join us next time on Who Has Influence, the game you love to love. Hi, friends. I hear that you have influence. Jesus said that you do. That's so cool. So do you know what you want to do with your influence? Not yet? Why don't we look at our memory verse and see if there's some clues to help us know what to do? Let's read it together. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1:14. The first clue is God's one and only Son. Who's that? Yes, this verse is talking about Jesus. Okay, the second clue is glory. What does glory mean? Well, let me give you a hint. If glory was lit up by light bulbs, we would have to wear sunglasses to look at them all. Glory means dazzling beauty or magnificence. So, put them together. Jesus is God's son and is magnificent. Third clue, how is Jesus' glory special? Yes, you're right, it's full of grace and truth. Fourth clue, 
We have seen. Who does that? We refer to. We refers to you and me. We who have seen Jesus in everything we read about in the Bible. And that means we can have influence if we do what Jesus did. Bring grace and truth to others every day. Let's say it together again so it sinks down into our hearts. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14. I have something really cool to show you to help you understand influence. When we pray, make me a messenger of your grace, truth, and justice, it's hard to understand just how that happens. We know God helps us, but how? The Bible tells us that God can do so much more than we can think or imagine. So, in our right actions like kindness, love, and generosity, God is doing something even more spectacular. We can have influence even when we can't see it. All right, so let's say this tray is the world and you're the shaving cream. You're gonna put lots of shaving cream on your tray. Make sure the whole thing is covered. Because you're a child of God, you have influence in this world. And this food coloring, it represents our right actions and attitude. So I'm gonna put some green over here. And then maybe I'll take some of this light blue color and put it down here. And then I'm gonna put this blue color right over here, kind of everywhere. And then you're gonna take this straw. The straw is like the Holy Spirit who works through our lives and into the lives of others. He comes along and moves things around so that we can experience his presence. Does this look fabulous to you? Not really, right? It's pretty messy. Sometimes being a messenger of God is messy, but the picture that God has is different. When he looks down on things, his eyes see everything. When you take this piece of paper and you press it down on this mess, it's a little like God's perspective. And then when we clean off all the extra, You can see that it's a beautiful piece of art. So it might look and feel messy to us, but God's actually creating the perfect picture. Hi friends. It's true, God is creating something beautiful and he invites us to help with its creation. Let's talk a little bit more about truth and justice. A message of truth helps us to live honestly, and a message of justice helps us to remember that God loves us all equally. That we aren't more special because of where we live, the color of our skin, or how much stuff we have. God loves everyone and invites us all into relationship with Him. But sometimes people send and receive the wrong message. We start to believe that God loves us more than somebody else, or we're special because of this or that, but none of that is true. So God has to send messages to correct our thinking. He might use one of you to help bring God's justice into the world. You may not feel like it, but God thinks you're pretty amazing. He loves the way you believe in him and have faith for what he wants to do through you. So. Begin to exercise your influence by praying for those you love, your family and your friends. God might has a, have a message for you to deliver. It'll be like a thought that won't go away or a feeling that you should say something specific to someone. If you don't understand, just ask God to help you understand. Jesus promised that we wouldn't have to worry about what we have to say, but that God would give words and wisdom if we asked for them. To help you remember to pray for others, make a bookmark to keep in your prayer journal. Write their names on a bookmark and or paste their picture on it. So then, then you can keep it and when you see it, you can pray 
make me a messenger of your grace, truth, and justice, and then pray for each of them by name. That is so awesome, Pastor Laurel. A bookmark, what a great idea. All you need is some cardstock, scissors, markers, glue, and anything else you want to decorate with. I use stickers for mine. All you have to do is cut your cardstock to the size you want your bookmark to be. Here's mine, it's this size, and then I cut out pictures of my family, wrote their names, and decorated it with stars. I even made one for Pastor Rachel, and one for my friend Quinn. Can you make one too? Can you tag us with what you make at CLA Church Kids? I'd love to see what you create. Bye. I'm so excited about this activity. I want to be influenced in the lives of my family and friends by praying for them every day. How about you, Quinn? Yeah, me too. I have some great photos I can use as well. These photos are amazing. I bet we can find some great ones. Have a great week. Bye.